Moving on. Our next quick little story tonight is that Spider-Man, the the PS4 Spider-Man game that came out last year, about, I think it was this month last year, uh, it has been announced that it is going to be getting a Game of the Year edition. The guy who the stream earlier worked on God of War, that's why he knew all of that insight. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, a uh, guy was who worked actually worked on the, the God of War game from last year uh, was hanging out in stream with with Shadow Links, which is pretty cool to get some of that behind-the-scenes insight. Um, but Spider-Man from last year has been announced that it is getting a Game of the Year version uh, for its its spectacular game. Uh, so now not only can you own the original release of the Spider-Man game, you can also own a Game of the Year version of that game, um, which... I guess is cool. Um, really, what it's going to do is probably produce an, another surge of sales for the game. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know it's going to double in sales. That doesn't make any sense. But I feel like a game of the year release is usually a way to kind of pick up any stragglers that you weren't able to get to purchase your game the first time. People have heard about it. Uh, now it's in the news a little bit. So people are like, oh, you know what, maybe I will pick up that Spider-Man game. Maybe I will finally play it. And then, you know, it sells a couple million more units or maybe a couple hundred thousand more units. I'm not really sure. But uh, that got me thinking. Spider-Man last year, so every, every year, we've only been doing Game Talks for a little over one year now. But every year, Will and I plan to get together at the end of every calendar year and discuss what is our game of the year. What is... The, the game that came out that year that, that, that moved us, that was just too good to ignore, that uh, just you know changed the way we thought about things or just really affected us in some way. What was the best game of the year? Last year's game of the year for me was Spider-Man. Um, this was a year in which God of War came out. This was a year in which Red Dead Redemption 2 came out. Oh, I need to fix these. This was the year that Red Dead Redemption 2 came out. Um, <clears throat> but Spider-Man for me took the cake. I also, we were looking at this, I'm looking at this website and behind my face, there's a number. It says that Spider-Man's, it shipped 13,200,000 units. 13,200,000 units of this game were sold or shipped, I guess. I guess that doesn't mean they were actually put into a human being's hands uh, at like GameStop or whatever, but it does mean that I guess GameStop and other retailers bought 13.2 million of them, which is tells almost just as much about what the game did. Uh, but this game was huge. I don't know how it did compare to Red Dead or how it did compare to God of War sales-wise, but this game was absolutely huge for a character in video games that was pretty much on the way out. Uh, Spider-Man... Hadn't had a good game in a while. Um, in my opinion, the last truly great Spider-Man game before this Spider-Man was uh, Spider-Man 2 um, for the PlayStation 2. That's the last one that I thought, man, this is just the, the last one that just blew my socks off. Everything else was Spider-Man, but it could have used something else. Spider-Man, but I wish this were better. Spider-Man, I wish this was better. Um... I have no idea what this Game of the Year version is going to include besides the DLC. Uh, let's see. Uh, I imagine probably just the just the DLC. Thanks for hosting Shadow Links. I appreciate you very, very, very much. Uh, thank you for hosting. You are a true blessing and a true genuine friend. Um, I don't know what it's going to, I mistyped that, um, Spider-Man Game of the Year edition available now for PS4, let's see what that's all about, um, it's, it's only $40, it's available through the PlayStation Store, the city, the city that never sleeps, uh, expansion is still $25, so the Game of the Year edition is effectively a half-off sale of Spider-Man. Um, uh, original Digital Deluxe Edition, which included the game and the DLC, 
<laughs> Thanks, man. It, it is true. It's been a wonderful day. It has been an absolutely great day, Shadowlinks, and and no and in no short or no small part thanks to you and everybody else that hung out earlier today during God of War. Um, but it's a essentially a half off sale of the original digital deluxe, which included the game of the year, the game and the DLC, uh, PlayStation Four exclusive launch, of course. So it looks like the DLC. What's up, the King of Queen? I've heard of you before via um, Shadowlinks. Welcome to the stream, my man. Um, thanks for hanging out. We're doing a little game talks. I don't think you've been here before. Uh, so essentially, every Tuesday night, me and my co-host uh, Will get together and talk about games. Sadly, he is under the weather tonight, so it's just me talking about some game news, uh, as well as in the end, we'll talk about. Um, we are going to talk about some games that I've been playing, or at least one. But we're talking about Spider-Man right now and how it's got a Game of the Year edition going on so it looks like it does have the dlc that's included but this game was my game of the year last year it is the game that i loved the most last year it is the game that that made me made me uh <clears throat> i cried during this game actually um okay cool nice congratulations on on modding for shadow links keep up the good work he is god or he is hopefully he is good maybe he's god i don't know um, but this is the only game last year that made me shed a tear from the story. Uh, I could have shed a tear from the gameplay. Thinking about it right now makes me want to boot up my PlayStation and download it just to play it. I very well may do that. <laughs> um, just thinking about this game gives me great memories of a wonderful time that I had last year with it. And I, it, it's, it's, and thinking about it today, thinking about it that it's getting a, a game of the year edition, it's getting these things, made me wonder like what was it that made Spider Man so good last year? Oh, I am, I am, I don't think I'm God. I don't, I don't want to be God. I'll just be regular old me. Um, I'll take good, but not God. Mm, that's a, that's a, that's quite a heavy title, Shadow Links. I don't know if I need that. But it made me think about what made Spider-Man so good. What made Spider-Man... I'll be back. I'm on PC, so I'm going to go to my channel and host you. Thanks, the King of Queen. I appreciate you, brother. Um, what made Spider-Man so good? And for me, I think it's three things. I think it's a culmination of three things that created... Um, that created a, a great game. Uh, Shadowlink says they brought back the swinging and had a good story to match the gameplay. I think, and that's, and I think those are the the two biggest portions. So I think the the base of it is is that you have Spider Man. The reason this game sold gangbusters as well as it just everyone knew about it is that you have a care a beloved character, arguably one of the most beloved uh, Marvel characters ever invented spider-man you have this game or you have this character that everyone knows and everyone wants to be spider-man there's very few super people who enjoy superhero things that would turn down the opportunity to to say hey I, if, if you could invent the the best spider-man game would you play it most everyone would say yes whereas there are some characters uh, certainly for me there are characters where like, i wouldn't care to play a video game about them even if it was the best version of that character ever uh, but Spider-Man is something is something that everyone knew, everyone knows, and everyone would be down to swing from a web and to shoot uh, webbies. Uh, yes, Kevin, I did. I played Spider-Man 2 back in the day. I certainly did. And I even beat Dr. Octopus at least one time, even though I can remember him being very, very difficult. But yes, I did play Spider-Man 2. By far my favorite Spider-Man game you know, besides this one, my best Spider-Man experience. So I think as a foundation, you have Spider-Man. Um, which has, you know, gives you that foundation, that initial shoot forward. Any, I'm going to buy a Spider-Man game just to see if it's good. Okay, Shadowlinks, I'll, I'll tackle your question in just a second. I'll tackle that question because I think it's a very solid question if anybody watched my game talk two weeks ago or one week ago, two weeks ago maybe, where we discussed um, the Avengers uh, second, I think, just like Shadow Link said, it's the gameplay. It's the web swinging. A Spider-Man game must 
give me the ability to swing wherever I want. A great Spider-Man game is not going to limit where I can swing. I need to be able to swing on lampposts. I need to be able to swing on skyscrapers. I need to be able to swing and do tricks like Spider-Man does. Um, thanks for hosting, King of Queen. I appreciate you. Thank you, 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 thank you very much. Um, but you have to be able to swing. The um, <laughs> I I remember now that I set that that host gif or whatever. Um, you have to be able to swing. The game, the swinging felt so good. You could swing. You could pull yourself. You felt like you moved the way Spider Man would move. On top of that, you had all of his gadgets. Peter Parker is inventing super cool gadgets that you can use. You can f use them to fight. You can use them to traverse. You can use them to hack things. All these different stuff. The combat felt really good. It was super fluid. You would punch. You would dodge. You felt like you were untouchable the way Spider-Man normally looks because of his spider sense during you know his combat whenever you see him in movies or wherever you think about what Spider-Man is and his superpower that he can sense things coming uh the game does a good job of making it look you know giving you that that blue thing above his head or whatever that says now it's time to dodge and whenever he dodge it looks so fluid it just looks so graceful the way spider-man ought to it's so it's everything is smooth and it goes into each other thing it's very reminiscent of i feel like a game that shadow links is streaming um right now the um Batman Arkham City or the Batman Arkham games that fluid combat that where you you know counter and all these different things and it made you feel very powerful made you feel very strong this game the gameplay carried this game all the way through um, it was a Spider-Man game A so people are in most likely and then B the gameplay was absolutely flawless and it was an extremely fun game to play um, yeah, I, I need to I definitely need to change that um, here. I can actually go in and do that um, uh, Chat links has got another questions here. I need to, I do need to change the minimum I don't know what a good minimum was it said to set it over one But I feel like I might have overcorrected corrected because I don't know much about bits um, King of Queen if you'll let me get to the end of the spider-man segment. I will change that for you um, <clears throat> but and then finally let me finish with my three reasons why I think it's good then I'll tackle uh, some Shadow Link's questions and the, th the third thing is the story so a good Spider-Man game uh, with with what I and believe is f almost flawless gameplay you can't be completely flawless nothing's perfect um, but uh, you have those two things but if you don't have a reason to want to play it besides just to press the buttons you're not going to finish it and so Spider-Man produce, excuse me, hopefully that you're not hearing any of that feedback from the microphone. Um, Spider-Man Insomniac produced, honestly, my favorite Spider-Man story possibly to date. Um, they can do in a video game, they can stretch out a story in a video game longer than a movie or a series of movies sometimes. Uh, but the story was affecting. Uh, it was It was this contrast for me with Peter Parker. It's Peter Parker always loses... Um, and thank you for following the King of Queen. I appreciate you, bro, very much. Um, Spider-Man, or Peter Parker always loses, and Spider-Man almost always wins. And, and Peter Parker is always having to sacrifice some of himself to allow Spider-Man to win the day. Not for recognition, but to save people. So Peter Parker has to give up you know, a lot of things to be Spider-Man. He has to keep his identity a secret to, to make sure his family and stuff is safe. He's not Tony Stark who can protect his family with technology or whatever. He's not Thor, whose family lives in Asgard. He's not the Hulk, who has, like, really no family or whatever, or he who can, whose only friends and family can protect themselves. Spider-Man is a teenager, uh, but now he's in his 20s in this game, of course, but Spider-Man is a person who has friend, normal friends and family that uh, uh, can, um, yeah, the one got a funny, who can't, protect themselves so he has to keep his identity a secret so his enemies don't hurt his family and friends uh and so he has to he has to leave you know has to, he loses in that regard but spider-man is able to keep doing his thing because peter parker makes a sacrifice um peter parker has a mentor a, a mentor in in dr o or dr octavius who eventually he has to give up that mentorship he has to give her up even that father figure that he has in order to save the city he has to give up 
this love that he has for a mentor because he went crazy and, and, and villainous in order to save a city. He has to betray this love that Peter Parker has uh, for this man to stop Dr. Octopus. And so Spider-Man wins. Spider-Man doesn't have that. It's Peter Parker who has to, who loses in that situation. And then finally, you know, nobody knows it, but, um, yeah, I said Peter Parker a lot. <laughs> Chad Link, sorry about that. You guys let me know if I'm getting on your nerves at all. Um, and then finally with the, the end, you know, Peter Parker slash Spider-Man has to make a choice. Like, do, do you save the person you love or do you save a whole city of people that you don't really know? Um, and the choice for Spider-Man is easy. He always saves the city, but the choice for Peter Parker is difficult because this is the person that he loves the most, you know? Um, so this story, for me, it was truly affecting. Like that, The last moment in the story where you have to make that big choice, that I, I shed a tear during that story. Uh, and that was the first time a video game had ever made me do that. So I think those three things, um, an amazing, or Spider-Man himself, one of my favorite superheroes, my favorite superhero hands down, uh, almost perfect gameplay, and then a almost flawless story, in my opinion, uh, came together to make the best game of last year. And it deserves a Game of the Year edition, in my opinion. And I think it deserves a few extra bucks. Let Insomniac make another one. So question time. Let's see. Starting out, Shadow Links asks, "Let me. Ask, what makes the difference between a good Spider-Man game but the Avengers feel ah? Uh, we know all the characters just like Peter. I think the problem between Spider-Man and Avengers is the focus. Um, you can make a good Spider-Man game because you're focused on what Spider-Man can do. Spider-Man can swing. Spider-Man can shoot his webs. Spider-Man can fight the way he fights. He can be graceful. You can make that game and you really have that tight focus." But with Avengers, you have these five different characters who all do completely different things. You have the Hulk, who just runs and smashes and punches. You have Captain America, who's a much more, um, you know, uh, trained, I guess, fighter. You know, military fighting style with a shield and all these different things. Who fights weight totally different from the Hulk and has different abilities. Like, the Hulk should be able to jump miles at a time. Um... <clears throat> <laughs> uh, they're doing tongue twisters in the chat. Uh, the the Hulk should be able to jump like miles at a time, where Captain America could maybe jump over a couple cars, um, whereas Black Widow could maybe hop over the hood of a car. Uh, or you know, Thor can fly. He can fly as fast as you know probably Iron Man can or whatever. So they can both fly, but even. Iron Man and Thor can't both do the same exact things, but you have this game where you get to play as them all. So you can't spend three or four years focusing, or five or six, or however long it took to make Spider-Man. You can't spend all those years focusing on one character and how to make them good. Uh, you have to split that up, and you also have to make a game where you feel like you can play as all those characters. Um, like some, There's something about the Hulk where you... You shouldn't put me on rails as the Hulk. That's why I tout Hulk Ultimate Destruction as one of the best Hulk or the best Hulk game. Is that you know it was open world. Like you you can't tell the Hulk not to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge. You can't tell the Hulk like you can only go through these certain buildings, and you certainly can't tell the Hulk that it takes more than one punch to kill a human being. You know, um, but you have to limit these things to make the game. And I think that's the reason that the Avengers just looks icky to me because none of those superheroes feel fully like what they should be, whereas Spider-Man feels like a full realization of what Spider-Man should be, at least within the confines of a video game. Um, so Shadow Links, I don't know if that answers your question reasonably or if you, if you think I'm silly for that, um, but let me know. And then you ask another question up here that says, but I have to admit the game began to feel repetitive. How can they fix that for the next game? God of War seems to feel fresh as you continue through. At, and doesn't feel stale, what can Peter learn from Kratos? Mm. I think that's tough. I don't know exactly what they can take from God of War and put into Spider-Man, just because like God of War is quote-unquote an open-world game, but the map is so much smaller. And I, I don't know if I'd call it... I just... I feel like open-world might be too much. I don't think it's exactly open-world, but it is... Um, yeah, I agree with you, Shadow Links. On the Avengers thing, hopefully we'll be able to see some gameplay that takes place outside of the opening 20 minutes. We still don't know if it's open world or not. I don't think it is. I think it's a mission-based thing. Um, 
but it could be, and, I, and I'm looking forward to seeing some more about it. So hopefully, hopefully they'll shut me up. You know, hopefully they'll make me feel like you know stupid for saying what I said or what I've said so far. Hopefully they'll make me wrong. That's what I want. I want a good game. Um, but with uh, God of War, it's, it's it's a smaller thing, and there it's not on rails, but it is on rails. If that makes sense, like there are those portions of the story where you can choose what you do, but also there is a linear thing that you're going through. Now, there is a linear story to Spider-Man, but there's a little bit less order to it. And it's a full open world. Like, it's all of New York City. It's huge uh, to play as. So I think there's going to be repetition in that. They've got to give you things to find, and they've got to give you things to go collect and things like that. Um, Maybe uh, more fluid, you know, going into missions. That was pretty fluid. Uh, with Spider-Man, but maybe even less. Um, maybe they throw away like the marker system where you don't you don't swing to the orange dot to start your mission. Like you just they say, hey, go to this building. You go there, and then it, there's some fluid cutscene that as you enter this part of the city, you know, Spider-Man swoops in. But that also could limit your movement in some way. So I'm not exactly sure what Spider-Man can learn from uh, Kratos. What I do. Link says that was that's a well thought out answer. I'll take it. Um, what I do worry about with Spider Man is how they'll make a sequel. What will they do? Because Spider Man, he has all his gadgets, he has all his powers at the end of you know ex- episode one or the first the first one. You know he has all the upgrades that you've given him and things. So my only thought is the sequel has to be you play as Miles Morales. Like you play as Miles Morales, and maybe sometimes Spider-Man comes and helps you, um, because it just didn't seem like there. This is super sequely to me. I don't know what they can do to improve upon this game, and you still play as Peter Parker. Uh, maybe that sounds silly too, but something about that. I don't know if it, I don't know. Hmm. I'm not really sure. Um. I don't know what they can do with the sequel. I'm worried about it, to be honest. I'm worried that they are not be able to pull it off again. I'm worried that Spider-Man 2 is going to be, not a flop, but I'm worried it's not going to be as good as the first one, and that's going to hurt. Um, the King of Queens says, if they were to make another Spider-Man, how would you like to see the other Avengers use in the game, or like an Alfred or Oracle from Batman, or like a quest giver friend from GTA or Red Dead Redemption? Uh, the King of Queen, i got to be honest with you, I don't want the Avengers in there. Um... I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I don't want the Avengers in there because how do you explain, so imagine, you know, Iron Man is a quest giver. How do you explain that Spider-Man can go talk to Iron Man, but Iron Man doesn't just like shoot the bad guy out of the sky for Spider-Man or whatever, you know, how do you explain that Thor flies by, but he doesn't help Spider-Man with that little thing he's doing, um... I don't say in, in my opinion. I just don't. I don't know if I want the Avengers in there. I think I want Spider Man to continue to, to to maintain. I don't want anybody stealing his thunder. I guess maybe I'm defensive of Spider Man, um, but it, to me, if the Avengers are around, it feels weird that they wouldn't help him physically with threats. But that is a good question. Absolutely, King of Queen. Um, let's see. More than likely, he'll have to lose, or Shadowlink says he, Spider-Man will probably have to lose his powers, like a lot of sequels, um, but he agrees, maybe more Miles, and maybe some Spider-Gwen action too. I don't know. We didn't have any Spider-Gwen introduced in the original, uh, but it's very possible, especially with the success of Into the Spider-Verse. Um, Shadowlink says include Venom and Carnage. I think that would be very cool. The, the whole symbiosis thing this this one ended with some kind of weird green goblin situation i think or maybe even some venom stuff with uh harry osborn inside that um that incubation chamber i'm not sure what's going on there is this the, a green goblin plus venom scenario i don't know um and Chatling says, maybe since PP is out of the MCU, we can get that teamwork in the game instead. Yeah, 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 I think so. Um, honestly, I, th- I Insomniac, I trust, based on that origin- the last year's Spider-Man story, I trust them with whatever they want to do. And until they betray that trust, uh, I'm happy to, to let them do it. 
Um, so, I think that's going to be it for Spider-Man. 